Hey, what's up, children of the sun? This is your spiritual advisor, Montre Bible, doing a reading on Saturday in Pisces. On March 7th, Saturn will go into Pisces for two and a half years. That's two and a half years of our life, okay? So let's look back when, when Saturn last time uh, went into Pisces. It was around 93 to 96. So you wanna kind of look back then, if you were, if you were alive, <laughs> and see how your life was affected by Saturn and Pisces. Now, Saturn just got out, of, is about to leave Aquarius. And <clears throat> when Saturn was in Aquarius, we had all those lockdowns because Aquarius rules society and people and how we come together. And Saturn is about limitation, hard rules, regulation, things of that nature. So when Saturn was in Aquarius, Saturn rules Aquarius anyways, um, <clears throat> along with Uranus. But uh, Saturn was in full power. When Saturn goes into Pisces, it's a little bit different because Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Neptune, which is a little bit more dreamy and kind of belief systems and stuff like that. So when Saturn goes into uh, our that sector, into Pisces, it's going to put a little bit more structure on our belief systems and challenge what we believe, as well as Saturn is about reality and, and Pisces is about the dream world, the things that we can't see. So it's about a strong energy of manifesting what you want. Let me get a step. <laughs> So be careful. The key thing here is be careful what you wish for, because it will become reality and pretty quickly. Saturn will give you um, what exactly what you want just to teach you a lesson and, and get, <laughs> just to teach you a lesson. Jupiter will give you what you want and give you an abundance of it with no strings attached, basically. <laughs> uh, and sometimes it's too much. But I wanted to just to pull some cards for the collective. Uh, just to see how Saturn's going to affect everybody and then pull some cards for, for everybody's zodiac sign. So um, be sure to like this video so it can spread around the internet and uh, the algorithm will push it forward. And if you haven't subscribed to my videos, think about it. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. I do videos every week uh, for the collective. And uh, if you need a personal reading, you can always hit me up in MontreBible.com. You see the little scroll right here at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, you can hit that. And my birthday is on March 7th. So that's when Saturn goes into Pisces. So if you want to, you can just go ahead and send me a little birthday gift too. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the energy here. Uh, let's see. Angel spirit, guys, ancestors, creator of all things. Just give me insight into Saturn and Pisces and how it's going to affect the collective. Saturn and Pisces. I feel like I need to reshuffle one more time. Let's do a three. One. Two. Right there. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Saturn and Pisces. All right. Yep. That's exactly what I thought, too. And then six of swords. And one more card. Ooh. Okay. All right. So at the bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Cups reverse. This is going to be about something unfulfilled, people not feeling satisfied. OK, how is it going to affect the collective? This is about not getting exactly what you want. The nine of cups reverse, even though I say Saturn will bring things into reality. The seven of cups, this is what you're dreaming about. Saturn is going to say you need to focus. Why aren't you feeling fulfilled in life? What is it that you don't have? What will make you feel fulfilled? OK, so Saturn is going to get down to what you truly desire, because Pisces is going to be a lot of emotions. So Saturn is going to start telling you, start making you focus on what is it that's not making you happy? OK, it's going to focus on that and it's going to want to bring that into balance with the six of pentacles right behind it. OK, it is going to be a transit where dreams become reality. So it's going to say, OK, you have all these options. What do you truly want? You got a lot of options. This could be options in love. This could be options in your your uh, whatever you want to do for the rest of your life. Excuse me. Got a little gas. <sighs> there we go. I had to burp a little bit. I didn't want to burp on the mic. <laughs> but the Seven of Cups is saying Saturn's going to be like, OK, enough of this dreaming. Enough of with your head in the clouds and, and all this dreaming. It's time to bring this into reality now. Let's focus. The Six of Swords is reversed. This talks about mental unrest. So I feel like a lot of people are going to be frustrated um, about their journey. Some of you are going to have to go backwards because the Six of Swords is about a mental journey, but it's also something coming back. 
coming back. I'll clarify that. And then also the Hierophant is reversed. This talks about, um, in one sense, I feel like it's a commitment to yourself. I'm kind of reading this a little bit different because I'm hearing different messages. So the Hierophant reversed is about commitment to other people. When I see the Hierophant reversed, it's, I'm feeling like there's a more committing to yourself, committing to what needs to be done. Also it's saying do something different. So let's get some clarifiers here. I think I want to pull from this deck here and let's pull. Actually, I'm going to pull here. This is what I hear. Let's pull the let's clarify the six of swords. And that's kind of like mental unrest. Um, <clears throat> frustration here. Or coming back from something. Let's see. Clarify the six of swords. And why is the six of swords reverse for the collective? And this is just a general reading. So, like I said, I can see many, many outcomes because we're basically talking about people here. The Magician card comes out with the Six of Swords. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said, be careful what you wish for? The Magician talks about what are you manifesting? You're going to be manifesting things. And it, some of it may make you happy. Some of it may upset you. And until you get control of how you manifesting things, Saturn's going to give you a hard lesson about what are you wishing for? So you keep saying, okay, I want this. I want this. I want this. Guess what? Saturn's going to give it to you. <laughs> and then you're going to be like, whoa, I actually got that. Let's clarify that Hierophant reverse. But it may come with, when I say hard lessons, you may get something and it, gives you so much responsibility that you have to be responsible for that you're like, whoa, um, like I'm stressed out now. Or it takes up a lot of my time. Saturn rules time. So you may uh, get something and it takes up most of your time. Or you're having to face a lot of those things that you haven't been facing. For example, um, you want a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You get it. But then now you have to face <laughs> all those issues because Saturn's going to give you a person where all your issues come up. And you got the relationship, but now you have to face all these shadows that you haven't been dealing with because now you have another person to kind of show you those things. Clarify the Hierophant reverse. Thank you. Some of you will be losing relationships. Saturn's going to take some of that out. <clears throat> the Six of Swords and the Hierophant Reverse. I'm just going to say this. This is not out everybody. This is just some of you because some of you are doing different things. The Six of Wands talks about defeat and the Hierophant. Some of you will have to face the illusions that you've been placed on yourself in your relationships. And some of you will be losing relationships that no longer serve you because Saturn will do that. He will cut things out. Um, they, you will have like some harsh breakups. Because Pisces is about illusion and how we, uh, idealism, ide ide idealism, how do you say that word? <laughs> Being idealistic, okay? So if you're in a relationship that's not really offering you anything and you're just like, oh, I'm just putting rose colored glasses, this, I see the best in the person. Saturn's gonna show you the reality of the relationship and we'll cut that relationship out of your life. So the Six of Swords talks about you're gonna have some defeats and some problems. And I'm looking back, back <laughs> even though it was high school, I mean, whew, Man, some of the relationships I had, I thought they were good. And then I found out maybe they weren't so good. <laughs> I saw the true nature of the person. So, yeah, it takes you out of that that dream state. It makes you look at reality as is. A lot of times um, you're going to see this not only in your relationships, but you'll see this out throughout society where <clears throat> you're going to things that you thought were really cool. Or maybe there's a celebrity you really liked. Or there's a truth that you believed in and then you're going to start seeing the reality of that truth okay saturn's going to show you who these people really are or something that you really put a lot of faith in because pisces is about blind faith and <clears throat> anything that you're putting blind faith in seven of cups you're going to be seeing the reality of it really really well i won't say quickly because it's a two-year transit but It'll be a, a repetition of things that will happen to you where you're going to be like, OK, I need to face the music. So, yes, Saturn is going to 
snatch off those rose colored glasses and make you see things as they truly are. And it may be hard for some of you. A lot of you, like I said, you'll be creating a reality for yourself. And it's going to be it's going to be kind of harsh a little bit. So let's pull some cards for the collective and check what <clears throat> how Saturn is going to be affecting each sign. Let's start with Pisces. <laughs> it's Pisces season, right? How will Saturn and Pisces affect the Pisces? Pisces is affecting your first house of you. So Pisces is probably Pisces rising will change the most. So let's see Pisces, how Saturn is going to affect Saturn and Pisces is going to affect Pisces. Ooh. Okay, we got the Nine of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the Three of Swords. <clears throat> so Pisces, uh, I feel like you will be getting your wishes, okay? Saturn is about to give you a reward. You've been wishing for a lot of things. The Queen of Cups reverse does tell me that you're going to have some things that you're going to have to face, uh, things that are going to maybe hurt your feelings. The Queen of Cups is reverse. You're going to have to, you're, Saturn is going to make you look at all the deep, dark secrets that you've been um keeping to yourself because you want to make everybody happy the queen of cups is is kind of depressed but she's also saying when she's reversed she's saying you put a lot of energy out saturn's going to want you to love yourself to bring that energy in and love yourself and cherish yourself as much as you cherish other people the three of swords reverse says that um yes it's going to be hard there's going to be some swords <laughs> this is past stuff though three of swords so things that um uh, <clears throat> some grievances that you may have had in the past may come back up Pisces because Saturn's like well you didn't deal with this so now it's time to deal with all this pain and hurt that you're going that you've been going through but the nine of cups says you're still going to get your wish fulfillment what's on the bottom of the deck yep Saturn just wants to bring some justice karma so if you've been doing well Pisces uh you should have a pretty good transit like I said there are going to be some harsh lessons just get ready for it um and it's mostly stuff in the past that you haven't been dealing with, okay? And this is only to bring karma or balance to your life. And that's what Saturn wants. He wants to bring balance to your life. So let's move on to Aries. Aries, this is happening in your 12th house. And your 12th house is the house of spirituality. Aries. Aries and Aries rising. What's these cards doing in here? Got them in the wrong deck. Hold on, let me look. Okay. I want to look at those cards anyways, because they see three of wands and the queen of wands. That talks about waiting in somebody's attractive energy, waiting on someone. I usually don't have those cards mixed up like that, so that was unusual. So, hmm. Three of wands means you may have to wait on something. Okay, so Aries. Six of Cups, Eight of Staffs, and the Emperor card. So, yes, the Six of Cups talks about things in your history, things that make you happy. Um, there is something that Saturn wants to bring up in your subconscious of what makes you fulfill, what makes you feel happy, okay? Saturn says you're going you're moving fast. Okay, the energy is going to be really fast with you, but Saturn also wants to work on your ability to control things. Okay? So what else we see? There's something in the past with you Aries and something's coming towards you. This could be a past love, this could be something that you used to do in the past. Look at this guy, he's looking back. So be, be this is another 12th house. There's going to be a lot of things. You need to focus on what your dream is. What is it that truly made you happy? He's looking backwards, looking at the sun setting. And he's like, I got to work fast, you know? The Emperor card, though, says Saturn's going to work on your sense of control. Are you being a control freak? Are you trying to control things too much? There is a sense of lack here as well. The Five of Pentacles. So Saturn is going to want you to look at honestly and say, what is lacking in my life? Why don't I feel completely in control? The emperor card reverse. It's almost like you're, it's like when you don't feel in control, you do overdo things to make yourself feel like you're in control. Maybe you're moving too fast. 
But Saturn's going to want you to really dive deep and see see what is missing in my life. That five of pentacles. Where are you lacking right now? Okay, so Saturn's going to the twelfth house is a spiritual place, so it may not feel as harsh with you, but it will be in your subconscious where you like you're just like okay. I don't feel happy about something and I need to dive deep on really what that is. Okay. So what is it that I would say, what is it that makes you feel happy? And what is it that makes you feel out of control? Focus on those things, uh, Aries, and you should be fine. Let's move on to Taurus and Taurus rising happening in the 11th. And your 11th house is your house of wishes and your associations. So very powerful place. Okay. We get the lover's card reverse, the 10 of swords, and the judgment card. Okay, so the lover's card reverse and the 10 of swords already tell me that your relationships is going to be a big play into this. You may be wishing for a certain person in your life and you thought it was over and guess who had ten of swords this is drama ten of swords reverse uh it means that something that you ended is not quite over there's going to be some drama between you and another individual you have to make a judgment call this this by the end of the transit you are going to make a judgment on whether you want to revive the situation or not and, and it, i would say take your time with it because especially when it comes to old lovers um trying to decide what's not working what is working you're going to take that entire two years the knight of staff says this person will be coming in pretty fast the knight of staff this is a someone they're they've got their little ship and they're they're coming in they're coming in really fast very strong fire energy here so you're looking at sagittarius leos and aries as well this could be also i see gemini here as well so um something that you thought was over like i said this could be someone that you truly want in your life 11th house of wishes and then they come back because the milk told you so i don't know give you what you want but there's a price to pay for it so if you've been if your heart's been set on somebody even if you <laughs> i don't want them be careful what you wish for also, if you already have a partner and you've been having problems with them, y'all could fall out during this time, this period. Is it completely over? I can't say for sure because you got to get a personal reading. Everybody's different. But if you have a relationship and it's been kind of rocky and there's been some negative thoughts between you two, Saturn's going to manifest that and a very potential chance of breaking up. But I don't see it would last forever, like a separation or something like that. Like it would come back together. Just play it out. Take your time. Let's move on to Gemini and Gemini Rising. Gemini and Gemini Rising. Oh, we got a jumper here. Let's pull that one. Two staffs. The Two of Pentacles. And the Empress, ooh, Gemini. The Knight of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so you have choice. This transit is going to be about choice for Gemini's. The Two of Stats says you have a have to you're getting a plan together on how you're going to navigate uh, your life right now, going this way or that way. You're at the crossroad, and the Moon is up in this card, meaning that there could be. Um, your emotions are very much involved, but you're not focused on the emotions as much, but they are affecting you, okay? But this is energy of, should I go left? Should I go right? What should I do? The Two of Pentacles says you're out of balance right now, uh, like you're losing something. So if this is in regards to love, as it could be, like you're losing an opportunity with someone. If someone wants to give you an opportunity, the Knight of Pentacles is there. So you see, your hand is out and say, I want to offer you something. I'm going to offer you something that's solid and true. Um, this is a very slow energy as well. But you're saying like you're you're dropping the ball somewhere. The Empress card says, sitting pretty though, someone that loves you, someone, if this is about love, there's definitely a lot of love here. The Empress is like Venus, okay? 
Everybody loves her, okay? So you have a choice on where you want to go left or right. And like I said, Saturn is going to give you definitely the choice in the matter. This could be um, someone who's a friend because they are a lot of house uh, coming closer to you. Um, if it's in regards to money and career, then you have a choice on which way you want to go because 11th house is, is just wishes. You know, what have you been wishing for? Whatever you've been wishing for, you're going to have a choice on whether you want to take it or just drop the ball. But something really solid is coming towards you that's going to make you feel comfortable by the end of the transit. But I think during the transit, <clears throat> that's where you're dropping the ball. You're going to have to drop something. Let's clarify that energy. I kind of, kind of I'm kind of nosy. I want to do this one. And it's going to be different for everybody. Right? So let's see. Why is the two of coins reversed for Gemini? Clarify the two of coins. Two of coins is like, yeah, dropping the ball or something. Oh, it's just too much energy. Seven of seven of wands. A lot of stuff is going to be coming at you, and you're going to have to drop it. Drop one of those options, and Saturn is going to cut it out of your life. Whatever is causing you the most stress. And maybe you don't want to let it go because the seven of wands is also being overly defensive, but losing a battle losing a battle of something coming at you. So you have a choice, but then there's gonna be so many things. When I, when I remember when I said Saturn's gonna start giving you a lot of responsibility, <laughs> it's like he's just gonna throw it at you. You want it, you got it. <laughs> but either way, it's gonna teach you some stuff and the Empress card is about being comfortable. So let me make sure she's in the right deck right there. Okay, All right, put that away. Let's move to Cancer happening in the 10th house. Cancer rising. Cancer is in Cancer rising. If you don't know your rising sign, check on astro.com. Know the time of your birth and the place. You can calculate that. In the 10th house. Whoop. Okay, Cancer. I'm going to jump. The sun card. The sun card is reversed. Cancer, Cancer rising. What's Saturn doing for you? Okay, the lovers shows up again. And the eight of cups, woo! -wee. Once again, uh, the two of wands shows up, Cancer, which means you have to make a choice. Um, you have to get a plan of action together. Saturn is definitely going to be affecting your relationships especially with one particular individual could be a Gemini because lovers is a Gemini or a Leo. We have the sun card here and it's reversed. If you're dealing with the Leo may, may be rocky. Okay. Uh, the sun is reversed, which means somebody's not happy about how things are going on. This may be a case where you may decide you want to move on eight of cups, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as it looks. Be sure to stay in your spiritual life during this period. Uh, the 10 of, because it's happening in the 10th house, this also could be dealing with your career, okay? The 10th house is what you're known for, what you're famous for, okay? It could be that what you're doing is not bringing you the uh, glory and shine that you thought it was doing, okay? So if your career is not where it needs to be, you could be deciding to do something different. The lover's card. The lover's is just doing what you love. So if it's in regards to your career life, if something hasn't been working with your career and what you were known for, not your job, your career, what you want to be known, for, what you're famous for. Um, it could be that another individual will help you or you might be moving on to something new, Eight of Cups. So you're going to have to make the choice. I love doing this, but Cancer, if it's not working, it's not working. And Saturn's going to show you that. I'm not going to convince you. Saturn's going to show you what's not working in your career life or what you're known for. Also, if you have a partner or a, a lover someone who's involved in your career uh someone could be moving on maybe it's not working maybe maybe you can't mix business and pleasure so i'm just trying to figure out, figure out the different scenarios it could play itself out with so if you if you're with somebody that you are a lover with and y'all do the same things it may be time for somebody to move on not the relationship but like y'all need to do something different <clears throat> All right, let's move on to Leo. Leo rising. 
what's happening in the ninth house. All right. I'm trying to make sure I'm on the right number. Yeah, thanks. Leo and Leo Rise. And the ninth house is um, higher learning, um, travel, foreign relations. You got the wheel of fortune, the six of staffs, and the five of staffs. Okay, so what's at the bottom? This is going to be a slow transit for you, Leo. The Wheel of Fortune is reversed. You're going to have to go backwards on something, and you may be feeling defeated during the transit. Um, you're going to have to go backwards in order to win. And the Five of Stats talks about competition. So, in regards to the ninth house, you could be dealing with a lot of people from different cultures. The Wheel of Fortune just says mm, going backwards or mm, not the best luck. It may be a hard transit for you, Leo. Could be dealing with the Cancer because the Chariot card. This is you being out of control of things. I feel a lot of chaos here. <laughs> a lot of chaos. And you're going to have to adjust how you do things because of extra people. Some kind of chaotic situation I and mean, not the entire two years, but five of stats is talks about um, getting out of the game. Five of stats reverse. So much competition. You're like, okay, let me just get out of this game. Stop playing this game here. And this could be if, if it's regards to, let's see, ninth house is higher learning. Maybe you're trying to re-educate yourself on something, going back to school because ninth house and then Wheel of Fortune reverse, stuff like that. If you feel like you're not succeeding in what you want, it could be that you need to slow down, maybe go back to school. Like if you're like if you're not getting what you want or getting some extra training on something. Um, what else could that be? Five of stats, six of stats, feeling conquered. It's just not a fun, this doesn't feel like a fun transit for you at all. Let's clarify this. Which one do I wanna clarify? This Wheel of Fortune, let's do the Major Arcana. Clarify the Wheel of Fortune. Leo. Yeah, this is the Two of Pentacles. You're gonna to have to balance your money. Two of Pentacles, having to find balance in chaos. Pisces can be a chaotic energy, and so you're going to have to hold it together with a lot of that energy. And it's a water sign, so you being a fire sign, yeah. You may find it hard to navigate during this period. Okay. All right. It's, it's just you just deciding. You're going to have to make some decisions on how you're dealing with other people. This is conflict. Five of Wands is about conflict. Um other people getting in your way and i feel like both of these have world world views foreign people people of your culture the world turned upside down what is not the world card that's the wheel of fortune but you having to go backwards just to be able to deal to move forward if you try to push forward too hard I feel like you're just going to lose. It's a harsh lesson you'll have to learn, basically, with dealing with other people. In a nutshell, to recap that, you're going to be dealing with a lot of people and you may not come off on top. Okay? So if you're in a situation where you have to deal with many, many people, it's that's where your lesson is going to be learned at. Because so many different personalities, and that's what I'm sensing with you, Leo, is that they are not going to make it easy for you. So whether you're trying to do business or if you're dating, <clears throat> it's just going to be harsh. Like, you're going to find like, man, there's too much going on here, you know? Let's move on to Virgo, Virgo rising.
Virgo. Virgo rising. Pisces is a seventh. Oh, then that must be your eighth. Because I know Virgo is the opposite. So it's Virgo seven, eight, nine. Man, I think my numbers are off. So if it's your eighth house, then it's your house of intimacy. Oh, that makes more sense. Your sex life. So Leo would be the eighth house. Virgo would be the seventh. And then who's after that? I'm trying to do it in my head, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Cancer. Cancer would be the, the ninth. Gemini would be the tenth. Taurus the eleventh. Yeah. Where did I get my numbers wrong at? I, I, I must have missed a number somewhere. Anyways, Leo is the eighth house. That's your house of intimacy, not the ninth. And Gemini's the ninth. Okay, Gemini's the ninth. I must have got confused around there. Or Cancer. Cancer's the ninth. Okay, got it. Okay, Cancer's the ninth. Leo's the eighth. Virgo's the seventh because Virgo's the opposite of Pisces. I'm clear now. I'm back. <laughs> house of intimacy for Leo. So, uh, what's going on? That makes more sense because your sex life. If you've got too many lovers, uh, Leo, you're going to have to cut some people out. That's the message for you. All right, Virgo, Virgo rising. Six of swords. The full card reverse. And I'm going to pull this one. This one sit up there. And five of cups. Ooh, Virgo. You're going to have to deal with healing here. You get the temperance card reverse something that you haven't dealt with in your relationships the six the six of swords talks about look at this big old red flag you have uh pulled away of a relationship to go on your own because of this big red flag that i'm seeing right here you made a decision he's holding up two swords i'm like i'm out the full card says i didn't want to move any further didn't want to go any further with this relationship the full card says, I'm not going to take a chance. Mm -mm, I got enough information. The five of cups talks about still hurting now. Even though, and it could be that maybe somebody left you, but I'm kind of feeling like you left the situation because you didn't want to take a chance on it. But the five of cups says you're still feeling lost. You're still feeling a hurt. Ooh, so what is Saturn going to do for you? The seventh house of relationships is going to say, hey, you got to deal with your heart. I'm not going to let you get away that quick. <laughs> Saturn is going to make you focus on what you truly want, what you truly desire. And also is going to make you deal with all that hurt and pain that you had in a past relationship that you haven't dealt with. Okay. Saturn, this is what this next two years is going to be about. So if you have a breakup that you still haven't gotten over, Saturn is going to make you face that. Also, if you're running away from problems, not taking chances, Saturn is going to make you face that too. Okay. So I was going to be like, uh, so I see you're running away from stuff. Let's go ahead and bring that lesson up. All right. So now we are at Libra, six house, six houses, health, job, day to day. I think we're on track now. Yes. <laughs> Libra, Saturn and Pisces for you. And Libra rising star card. Okay, that's not bad. Feeling hopeful. The ten of swords. Well, spoke too soon. And the six of swords reverse. Okay, so you feel hopeful. You're gonna be feeling good and having your eyes on the prize. I think you've already been through a bunch of stuff, Libra, and you feel good. The Ten of Swords says nothing's over yet. Ten of Swords and the Six of Swords. Just like Virgo. Except this is someone else. This is someone else's energy. I feel like there's going to be some drama. Somebody who left your life coming back in. Um, after their journey is coming to you. Um, this could be someone you know or someone you don't know. Uh, but this person's on a journey. And they decided and they're coming towards you and they have a lot of drama in their life 
So, what else do I see? The devil card reverse. A lot of the toxic behavior, and this is Saturn's energy too, Capricorn. Um, a lot of things that toxic behavior, addictions, problems like that, Saturn is going to make you face those problems, the devil card. And it's going to want you to release that and let it go. Okay. So if it, even if it doesn't deal with another person and it's just you by yourself, the Ten of Swords is this, the drama that we drum up in our mind and the, the uh, unrest, the mental unrest. So in a nutshell, <laughs> Libra, you're going to be working on your mental health. Very, very big on your mental health. Um, this transit, six house health. <laughs> um so focus on that and i think you should be fine even if you don't focus on it saturn's gonna make you focus on it focusing on your mental health libra let's go to scorpio and where are we at fifth house yeah. this house is house of creativity and romance children let's see what's saturn doing for you That, uh, Scorpio, Scorpio rising. Six of staffs, the king of swords, and the justice card. Ooh. Scorpio, you could be dealing with an individual. It looks like you're winning, but the king of swords is reversed. Of course, Saturn's, Saturn is going to show you the problems right and this is with an individual you won you've won a battle you're getting what you want saturn is actually rewarding you this time but the king of swords reverse is somebody's in your way could be in regards to love uh the knight of cups wants to offer the love but the king of swords if this individual wants to love you wants to offer you something they sure are not speaking up so you could be dealing with the individual who's not communicating good. Uh, an individual who says the wrong things, but they love you. Okay, Scorpio, this is about justice and balance. This is karma. This is about during this transit, uh, Saturn will, if this is an individual in love and relationships, um, Saturn's gonna give you this person, but this person still is not where they should be. Um, so don't give up on them. Uh, so this is going to be a, because it's your fifth house. This is a cool relationship. It's just the person. It's going to be different for everybody, right? The King of Swords is just someone who has bad communication skills. <laughs> um, they could be just ugh, potty mouth, anything, uh, or just not talking or not expressing their emotions. But I do sense with that Knight of Cups, uh, they do really care for you and they do want to um, be with you. This this is a two year transit though. It'll take a time. It takes time to get people to open up with their feelings. It's, it takes time to learn how to communicate properly with different individuals. I think you're dealing with someone who communicates completely different from you. And um, at the end of the transit, it should, things should start balancing out. So let's move on to Sagittarius happening in your fourth house of stability. This is home, family, stability, Sagittarius, and Sagittarius rising. Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. The High Priestess, the Four of Swords, and the Queen of Cups. Okay. The King of Coins, you could be uh, overworked. King of Coins, reverse. Uh, Sagittarius, in regards to your fourth house of stability, there could be some financial issues. Uh, I sense that you will be working pretty hard though. The High Priestess says, focus on your intuition when it, come, when it comes to your stability, your home, uh, 
Pisces, this is a very spiritual sign. Saturn is going to want you to really pull on your spiritual self to gain the stability that you're looking for. The Four of Swords uh, tells me that there could be a period of rest as well. You need to take some time to rest with the King of Pentacles and the Four of Swords. Um, this could mean that you need to just learn when to take your breaks. OK, uh, when to take your vacations. If this is in regards to uh, love in your fourth house, this just could be someone that you consider family or someone that you're married to. This could be a breakup. This could be the queen of the queen of cups is um, someone who's close to you. Like I said, a maternal figure. Um, this is sadness. Uh, this is she can be depressed where uh, it could be dealing with your mother. Um, other figure uh but this is also saying i need to love myself you could be dealing with the, the king of pentacles someone who is a workaholic could be a relationship uh if you are married to the king of pentacles um someone who's just work workaholic there there's a chance of a breakup okay or a separation at least i don't want to like divorce everybody but <laughs> but saturn does that anyways just saying if you're in a relationship with someone because fourth house is a little bit closer. This is not just a relationship. This is more like a marriage. Someone that you've been with a long time. This is for those Sagittarius that have been with someone for a long time. Fourth house, they live with y'all live together, stuff like that. There could be a, a chance of some problems. Um, either on their side or your end. Someone's either working too much or not quite seeing eye to eye and a slight separation could cause problems. Um, what else? The high priest just says, trust your intuition on this one. If it's not, and this is regards to something, some of y'all might be moving or sorts. Um, just let your let your heart guide you. You're gonna really have to depend on your spirituality to even get through this. Let me clarify your energy real quick with the high priestess. High priestess is so nebulous, but that's Pisces energy too. Let's see, clarify the high priestess. Six of Cups. Yeah, this is a past life connection. You have a, this is about being happiness, um, the past. You see there's a couple there. Um, this is a spiritual connection you may have with another individual. And there's just going to be some, Saturn's going to show you, and I told you, Saturn's going to take off those rose-colored glasses. And Saturn wants you to see the reality of what's going on. And you may need to take a break, and it may be hard. It may, it may hurt your feelings a little bit. But remember, Sagittarius, First and foremost, love yourself. If you're not getting the attention that you're looking for, love yourself first. And that'll kind of get you out of that dark place, okay? The Saturn is going to give you a harsh lesson about what makes you feel secure, what makes you feel stable, okay? Because it's the fourth house, it's about stability. So Saturn's going to be like, eh, this isn't really stable. So we're going to shake this up a little bit. You know, maybe you need to cut this off and cut that off. And Okay, all right? Harsh lessons, that's what Saturn does. All right, let's move on to Capricorn. Happening in the third house of communication and friends. Close associations. Communications, brothers, sisters, friends. Capricorn. And Capricorn rising. Judgment card, the lovers, and the wheel of fortune. Okay. The six of coins says there's something out of balance between you and another individual. Someone's giving too much or someone's taking too much, okay? Saturn is going to bring up issues, the, the judgment card and the lovers. Okay, so this is about communicating. This is about your mind. This is about you just saying, okay, I'm going to revive this relationship. I'm only going to say relationships because of the lovers is there, but it also could be friends. Um, but third house is just about how you communicate. These are all major arcana cards. So this is pretty much set in stone. The judgment, the lovers, and the wheel of fortune reverse. The wheel of fortune is saying something seems stuck. And Saturn wants to show you what is stuck with your relationship. Why are you guys not moving forward? Um, and this could be something dealing with your mind on how Capricorn, 
what are you not communicating? What is being said wrong? Um, where are you guys not seeing eye to eye? The lovers, it's all in the middle of this reading. Let's clarify your, this energy with the Wheel of Fortune. These are all major arcana cards. Why's the Wheel of Fortune here? Oh, the Prince of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles. You have somebody that is always on the go. The Prince of Wands also is a very sexual energy. Could be that the person has other lovers. Um, something's not being communicated. The Seven of Pentacles, I see there's a lot of investment that you put into this connection. You're about putting investment into people. And it's almost like you have to wait this out. So Saturn is going to give you a transit this next two years uh, involving another person. I think you already know who this person is. If you're single, they're coming. But kind of like with the previous, who said that? Who oh, I was saying that with? Like somebody's not quite perfect. The person has issues and you're going to have to invest some time and energy into this person. And I feel like you're the one who's giving the most. And you're gonna keep on giving. <laughs> and this is what's stuck in the relationship. And you put a lot in. You're like, well, I don't want to give up on something and I don't put so much into and I'm waiting for it to grow. Saturn is gonna say, you're gonna have to make a decision on whether you're gonna keep on waiting or you're gonna let it go. There are some things that you don't know. There are some things you don't know. Things that you that's in the dark, but you trust. Trust and believe. Saturn's going to show you in these next two years of everything that you don't know. Uh, it's going to make some things clear to your mind. Third house. A lot of things are going to be clear to your mind. And you'll make a judgment call. It's two years, so. It ain't going to just happen overnight. And it. All right, let's pull. Let me make sure these cards are in the right place. I thought so. Let's see if I put those in the wrong deck. Something told me. My spirit told me. Those cards are in the wrong deck. All right, so let's move on to Aquarius, last but not least. Happening in your second house of money, income, and value system. I'm not pulling on this guys. Come on. All these jumpers. Where is an Aquarius arising? <laughs> Night is past. Six of swords and the nine of coins. I'm only laughing because that's the card that jumped out before. Okay. Hi, Priestess. Is at the bottom. Aquarius, in regards to your finances, uh, you're going to have to trust your spiritual world and your intuition, Pisces energy. Aquarius, Saturn is going to fine tune your intuition and your spiritual life so that you know which direction to go to make the most money. The Six of Swords says there's some, you have some mental unrest. Uh, this could be in regards to your job, what you're doing. You're going full speed ahead. You got that Knight of Stars right there. Knight of Stars. Whoop, you're blurry. Here we go. Knight of Stars is saying you're moving uh, toward a new adventure. And this is because you're unhappy at where you presently are. This also could be an old opportunity coming in. The Knight of Pentacles says you will be financially independent at the end of it. You know why this is so easy for you, Aquarius? Because Saturn rules your sign, and Saturn's going to be like, okay, let's fix some things real quick. I, Saturn likes Aquarians and Capricorns. Um, it will give you a harsh lesson, harsh lesson, but it's stuff. Capricorns and Aquarius are used to harsh lessons. So it, I don't see you, you guys getting phased too much, but I do find sense that you will be sitting pretty at the end of it with the Nine of Pentacles. So there will be some problems though. Of course, Saturn's always going to give you some problems. So whatever you're trying to make money doing, there's going to be some rocky waters basically so just get ready for it 
just get ready for it but you'll be fine all right guys so that is the reading for saturn and pisces like i said it will give you your wish fulfillment with a price that's why we have the nine of cups reverse it's going to be about you're gonna get a you're gonna have something or what is it what is it that you want that you don't have yet you will receive it and then saturn is going to be about balancing that energy out it will slow you down but at the end of it you'll have a new passion okay all right i think we're good to go if you guys need a personal reading be sure to book it at montrebible.com you'll see it at the little scroll right here at the bottom right here and uh if this really resonates with you please go ahead and hit that like button and if you really really resonate it go ahead and hit uh send me a super thanks to show your appreciation and to tell me happy birthday all right you guys make your reality happen because if you don't do it then who will have a great transit